It's pretty crazy in college football where so many things are happening during the offseason, particularly with conference realignment and teams jumping ship to other conferences. It's pretty maddening. But the thing is, is that Arkansas doesn't have to worry about it and how thankful we are for that. But there are a lot of things that could impact the Razorbacks when it comes to conference expansion and conference realignment. So let's go ahead and dive into it here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 TheBuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet online where the game starts. Now, I know everybody's excited about the fact that we have finally made it to Friday and all the fun stuff that come along with that. Uh, but, you know, it's getting pretty slow. I know that Arkansas has had some recruiting stuff go on this week, um, especially when it comes to football. And I'm going to be curious to see when you only have you have 20 commitments already, what the rest of the time is going to look like. But either way, uh, we're just moving it and, and having some fun with on, on the podcast with all different types of content. But one of the things that I feel like is kind of something I failed at. I'll, I'll be honest about it. And, you know, I never failed anything, obviously. But I did fail at this. You know, conference expansion and realignment has been such a hot topic in college football. We haven't really discussed it. We haven't really dived into it here on this podcast. And I think one of the reasons being is because, you know, Arkansas is safe. They're good. They don't have to worry about where they're at or where they're going or know if they're going to get impacted by this at all i mean the only way that they do get impacted is just teams get added to the conference but the conference itself is it's great to go it's good to go sec's got it down pat and arkansas has nothing to worry about and i'll say this uh just to kind of make sure that everyone knows where i come from on it like frank broyles did a lot of bad things or things that may not have been great for the program at times like i think overwhelmingly his good outweighed his bad but without a doubt, the greatest thing he ever did as an athletic director was getting Arkansas to the SEC, jumping ship to the SEC. That was by far the greatest thing he could have ever done. And we are so thankful that that happened because if that didn't happen and Arkansas would have been part of the Big 12 or whatever, they would 100% be one of those teams that gets left behind, 100%. But luckily... We don't have to worry about that. We're in the SEC. People wonder, it's like, why do you root for SEC teams? Why do you start the chant? Well, these are the reasons why. Best conference in all of college sports. But, you know, Arkansas is, is good to go, and it's safe. But the one thing that, as I mentioned, could have some sort of impact on Arkansas and some of the things that they'll have is teams that get added into the mix, which we know that Texas and Oklahoma are already officially going to be joining the SEC I guess at the latest by 2025, could be earlier than that. But they're going to join the conference. We don't really know officially what divisions are going to look like or if it's going to go to a pod system or if there's going to be no divisions whatsoever. Uh, we, we don't necessarily know what that's going to look like. We have ideas about it. But as of right now, we know that our, the SEC is going to have 16 teams and it's going to be just as good, if not better, than what it has been before, because when you add big brands and big teams and and big schools like Texas and Oklahoma, you don't get better, you get or you don't get worse, you get better. But so many people have brought this up where it's like with Texas and Oklahoma, it's like, oh, that's gonna that's gonna hurt Arkansas. And people said this when AM joined the conference, oh, it's gonna hurt Arkansas. And there'll be even some people that attribute Arkansas's lack of football success since AM joined the conference because of AM which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. And if any of you believe that Arkansas really did not do well in the SEC because of AM, you need to change your opinion because it's a very dumb one. The only thing that AM had an impact in in Arkansas is that they were going to now play each other in via a conference. But what made Arkansas not be very good as a football program was terrible coaches. AM had nothing to do with it. It was just terrible coaches. And so I, I, I don't buy that, and I'm not going to buy it when Texas and Oklahoma join the conference, that suddenly Arkansas is just going to be this uh, 
you know, second fiddle, just going to be a team that nobody thinks about, that nobody cares about, that they're going to get passed over. It's going to make make it so much more difficult, so uh, so much harder on them. I don't buy that. I don't believe that. Because here's the thing. We're talking about here in the near future, the immediate future of what all these programs look like. And I'm telling you right now, with Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, between those three schools, who am I putting more stock into as far as being more successful here in the next five years? I'm saying it's Arkansas. You can say bias. You can say homerism. You can say I got my Razorback rose red tinted sunglasses on, whatever. But it's just the truth. Oklahoma hired Brent Venables as their new head coach who could work out. Or he could not. You know, like there's nothing that leads me to believe that Lincoln Riley is going to do just as good of a job of, of uh, or Brent Venables is just going to do just as good of a job as Lincoln Riley. There's nothing to point to that. And Lincoln Riley did a really good job, but he also was doing it in the Big 12. When Texas was down and, you know, Baylor had their issues, TCU was hit and miss, Oklahoma State was decent but never great. Like, he did it in there. And so I think that Oklahoma is going to take a step back, regardless, even in the Big 12 and especially once they get to the SEC. And then Texas, Steve Sarkeesian's there. We know that the recruiting's great. They got Arch Manning. Everyone's going crazy thinking that it's going to be so much better with him. And it might. It might. But there's nothing that leads me to believe that Texas has what it takes to be competitive nationally year in and year out on the same scale of a Bama, of an LSU, of a Georgia, because they have such a terrible culture. They have such a uh, a well, uh, a poorly ran booster system. Like everything going on there is, is something that's just so bad and pathetic. Like I just, I can't even express how it's so, how stupid it is that Texas is as bad as they have been. So with all that going on, I believe I'm putting more stock in Arkansas than I am those other two programs. Now, am I saying that, Arkansas is going to win more games in Texas and Oklahoma every year? No, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying, though, is that it seems like Arkansas has a much better future and a more sustainable and uh, a system with Sam Pittman that makes you feel a lot more confident about the direction that they're going. Oklahoma is an unknown. Texas is Texas. Whatever. So, those are the teams that are actually going to be joining the conference, Texas and Oklahoma. And how it impacts Arkansas, to me, it's only a positive. And it's a positive in the way because now you get to play Texas and Oklahoma frequently, which was something that I felt like should have been happening for a long time as it is. Texas, of course, because of the rivalry, the, the old traditional Southwest Conference rivalry. And you think about the times they've played in football. This past year in football was awesome. Think about when they've played in basketball, some of the great games they've had. Think about when they've played in baseball, some of the great games they've had. Even when they've left, even when Arkansas left the conference, they still would play each other. And Arkansas, by and large, had a lot of more success against Texas in their sports than not. If anything, it was pretty even across the board. So taking all that into consideration is great. And then Oklahoma, something that always drove me crazy growing up is I never understood why Arkansas and Oklahoma did not play each other more in the regular season in football. They did in basketball very frequently. They have in baseball. It's happened. But why they never played in football was really annoying to me. And I kind of, I always got the vibe that Oklahoma was too good for you, that you were uh, just, you were on the same scale as Oklahoma when it comes to them. That again, that was the vibe I got. Not saying it was true, but now you get to play them more frequently. And because of that, you're going to build up and have great rivalries, great travels. Like Fayetteville is what, three, three and a half hours away from Norman? Something like that. Easy travel over there and back. You'll have you get to go and see a game in Norman and the football game. Austin is far away, but you'll still get to see some great games there and be able to renew and renew that rivalry. But yeah, Ar with Arkansas, Texas, and Oklahoma joining is nothing but a great thing. But what if other teams join? What if other teams get added to the SEC? Who would get added, and what would that look like? We'll talk about that here in just a second. But BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting sports needs and info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. 
Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions at BetOnline.net, where the game starts. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so we've been talking a lot about conference expansion and how it's going to impact Arkansas just with Texas and Oklahoma joining the conference. But the question now becomes, what if other teams join the SEC? Now, I'm going to say this at the time of this recording of this podcast, there is no reason to believe that the SEC is adding any teams right now. I know that there was a, uh, a blue check mark yesterday that started a Twitter storm and saying that uh, it was like Virginia – and Clemson, Florida State, and Miami were all joining. Or no, Clemson, Florida State, Virginia, and North Carolina, I think is what they said. But everyone took it seriously. It's not true, at least not at this point in time. Um, because here's the thing about the SEC. The SEC does not negotiate. The SEC does not you know, ask. The SEC sends you an invitation, and you accept that invitation. Now, I saw that the, a former North Carolina president uh, – Said he's like, oh, well, we could have joined the SEC and Tommy we wanted to. No, you couldn't have. No, you couldn't have. Now, if they invited you, yes, but no, it wasn't one of those things that you call up the SEC and it's like, hey, we'd like to join your conference, and they and they would say, oh yeah, please come on in. The SEC invites you. They invite you to the party, and you show up to the party. And if you don't show up to the party, you're going to regret it. That's just the way it works with the SEC. But. None of those teams officially or even unofficially are joining at any point in time. But we also know that the SEC is a very smart conference. Like they're a very forward thinking, innovative, driven conference that obviously saw the situations with Oklahoma and Texas. And when Oklahoma and Texas showed interest, that was a no brainer of an invite. But what if there were other teams that started showing interest? What if other teams like Clemson, like Florida State, like Miami, like North Carolina, like all these other teams that are in the ACC, what if they said, you know, we kind of would like to join the SEC. We, we think about it. Would the SEC extend that invitation? Here's my thing on that matter. We know this is all, all football driven. Every bit of this is football driven. And if you don't have a great football program or a big brand in football, you're not going to get an invite here. The SEC expanded in 2000, I guess, was it 13, 2014, with AM and Missouri because they added television markets. They added the St. Louis and Kansas City television markets with the Missouri. And with AM, it was a big brand with a lot of fans across the board, but also got into Texas. That was a no brainer. But now you're at the point where things have changed so much just in the past 10 years that you're not really worried about, okay, well, uh, you know, let's let's worry about let's bring in some people that can make us more competitive in sports. You don't need that. You don't have to have that. You're the most competitive conference in all the country. All you need is stuff that will help you make money. And in Oklahoma and Texas, big brands. Texas might be the biggest brand in all of college football, college sports. And Oklahoma is a big one, too. That makes sense. That's why I believe that if they did add a team, it would be a team like Clemson. Clemson has become a nationally relevant, national championship caliber program. In fact, the best one besides Bama, I would, I wouldn't even argue. Like, I think it's been the best one since Bama for sure in the past five to 10 years. I've won multiple championships. I've beaten Bama a few times to win those championships, which is not something that's easy. I've played for a national title, you know, multiple times. They lost to LSU, I guess, in one national title game. And last year they had a really down season of only 11 wins. So. Really wasn't that great for them. But still, uh, they will be back. They'll be a national championship contender, and they've had a brand. So I would be interested in bringing in a team like Clemson. I think that would be really good for them. Some people have said Florida State, Miami. Now, these two are interesting because Florida State and Miami both have really big brands. But Florida State football has been kind of their big thing. They've been decent in basketball and in baseball and all that. but. You know, are they a big enough brand for you to want to bring them in? 
what about Miami? You get the South Beach side of things. We know about the U and how big of a brand it is and all of that. But would that add to your conference? Would that add money? Would that add eyeballs and viewerships to television sets if you added Miami? Well, between the two, and I'm sure people disagree with this, I think Florida State would be the better bet, honestly, because I think Florida State is more relevant in a lot more sports that has a large fan base, a large following. A lot, I mean, you're in the capital city of Tallahassee. Um, I think that it, it's possible that the future of Florida State looks a lot better because Miami has not been relevant really in 15 years. And it doesn't look like that's changing anytime soon. They've always had problems. I don't know. I just feel like between those two teams, I think Florida State would be the better bet every, for everything involved. So you could add Clemson, you add Florida State. That'd be pretty good. But would you go to 20? Well, if you went to 20, you'd probably want to add Miami. You probably want to add Miami. I think they'd be the third in line that you'd want to go with because they do have a brand and uh, they do are in South Beach and there's people that are Miami fans across the country. So, you know, there would be that element. So yeah, add in Miami. And then comes that fourth team because you don't want to have 19. You got to have one more. Some people want to say, well, what about going out to the Big 12? You're not adding any more Big 12 teams. There's none out there that you would really add except for maybe, maybe Oklahoma State. But I don't think that's happening. You would still continue to go out to the West and to the West Coach, Coast. If you had to add another one, I think it would have to be from the ACC. Give me a second here. You have to go, for, to, go to the ACC and go with Virginia Tech. I think that would be your fourth option. Get Virginia Tech into the conference, and they have a big football program, as we know. Basketball's decent, all that, but it's a brand. That would be your fourth option. But with all the four options I just mentioned, I just mentioned the ones that I feel like would be ones that if you invited them to the SEC, they would hop on board. That's what I'm saying for that list. But there's one team that if you added, if you invited them, I don't know if they'd for sure come. But if you invited them, it would be the biggest home run of all time if they joined. And that's Notre Dame. Now, I know people hate Notre Dame. It's very polarizing with Notre Dame. I get all of that. But if you were able to add Notre Dame into the mix, I mean, you'd have to add, of course, some other teams to, to balance it out. But like, imagine if you added Notre Dame and Clemson. Notre Dame and freaking Clemson. I, I just, I, I just wouldn't, I couldn't even imagine what that would be like. Like what the, the absurdity of the competitiveness of this conference would be. It'd be so much fun. It'd be so much fun to talk about. Um, but I say all that to say this. I don't know if the SEC is going to expand beyond 16. I think that if Notre Dame was interested, they would for sure come. I think if Clemson was interested, I think they for sure come and they get an invite. But I just don't know what the SEC's intentions are right now. You know, they're kind of the, they're in the champagne room of the of the strip club that everyone's wanting to try to get into, but only certain people are allowed. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It only matters of who you know and who you're in, who's getting invited in. That's kind of how I look at it from the SEC. So I don't need it, but some of these teams, if they got the invite, it'd be pretty interesting to see how it all work out. All right, so as the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. I can tell you that you know LinkedIn is one of those things that I have seen where I have one. I know a lot of friends that have one. I can't tell you how many of them have been able to find the dream jobs that they've been looking for their whole life because of LinkedIn. Not only because people have contacted them, but also they've seen jobs open up, have openings, and they see notifications. They see opportunities come their way, and they're able to jump at that opportunity and in a lot of cases get the jobs. It's just the best way to do it wherever if you're wanting to move somewhere else. You want to find a different job in a different field, whatever it may be, LinkedIn has you covered. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post the job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free with terms and conditions apply. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I know we've talked a lot about conference realignment and everything, and it's just, it's madness. And the thing is, is like some people have felt like this is the end of college football. It's just not going to be the same. It's not going to be as fun. It's, 
you know, and I, I always thought that that was kind of a myth. I thought I was like, no, college football will still be great. And I still think it will be. But I will say that the amount of things that have been shaking and moving so quickly, it has kind of given me some concerns. Not in the, not in the respect of concerns of like, oh, college football is coming to an end, but just some elements where I'm like, I don't know if it's going to be as enjoyable or, you know, as nostalgic as I once thought, which again, we can't look at that in the sports spectrum because so many times sports will change and we, we got to change with the times. We just got to accept it. So it's like, I think that there's an element of that into that, but also at the end of the day, I just think that there's way too many things going on to where it's like hard to know exactly what it's going to look like, but I'm here for conference realignment. I'm here for conference expansion. I'm here for making the games and the conferences in the weeks that much better. I am all for that. But what I'm not for is completely taking away some of the greatness of college football. Uh, the regional rivalries and the regional games was always so much fun about it. Um, you know, the aspects of uh, just having the pageantry and tradition uh, of certain games and, and certain rivalries and certain unique matchups that you've never seen before. Like there was always that element of that, but now it seems like we're just going to have to live with the new element. We can do it. It'll be fine, but still... It's one of those things in the back of my mind I can always be concerned about. But either way, appreciate everybody listening into Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter, Buzz John Neighbors, for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.